In this video, I'm going to show you how to correctly combine muscles if you choose to split them up into subsets first to apply some properties separately before combining them for the simulation. Now, personally, this isn't my preferred way of working, but it's completely valid to do it this way as long as you know certain caveats and you're aware how to merge them correctly. Um, I can understand that some people might prefer to work with it in regions. I prefer to have fewer nodes and work with everything in one node as much as possible, but it's completely a matter of personal preference. So let's look here. So basically I've just used split nodes to split my muscles into different groups. Well, not groups in the Houdini sense of the word, but just collection of muscles. And I have given them different muscle solidify with different settings. Now I've done this in a way where I've set up the entire stream, merged them at a specific point and did the simulation. But if all you wanted to do was to split up your muscles in order to solidify them separately, it's completely fine to use a regular merge node after solidifying them. So I could have merged all of these together and then cached them out and then just had a single stream downstream of that. Or you can even go as far as doing the same thing after your muscle properties nodes. Even the muscle properties can be merged just with a regular merge node. However, you need to use a muscle merge node once you have created a muscle constraint properties node. That's the one condition. The other condition is if you're working with Franken muscles. But for this case, I'm going to assume that we're not using Franken muscles. But if you have muscle constraint properties, if you have any attachment candidates, whether it's muscle to bone, muscle to muscle, or glue candidates, then you have to use a muscle merge instead of a regular merge. Now, the reason for that is because once you create these constraints, it creates a detail attribute dictionary. Let me show with one that has one. And there will be different values for the different detail attributes in each stream. And if you merge them together with the regular merge, it won't know how to handle them. Whereas the muscle merge knows how to handle the merging of these dictionaries. So if you're not sure if you should use a muscle merge or not, check if you have any of these muscle to bone muscle to muscle dict attributes or to be safe just make sure you always use it after muscle constraint properties node um, in terms of where along the stream to do the merge i did it before the muscle mirror here and more importantly before the muscle flex and the muscle mirror needs to go before the muscle flex so that's why it's before the muscle mirror but you could if you wanted to mirror each individually and then merge them that's also fine the the reason for this is the muscle flex. Let me show in this other file. Sorry for the confusing lines. But here what I just did is I have a muscle mirror and a muscle flex for each independent stream. And I can understand that that might be tempting to do because all the parameters in the muscle flex node can be a bit confusing. However, let me merge them all together. If you look at the frames per second when you play it, you see that it's about two point something. Whereas, and it's the same even if you use a regular merge, it's not that dictionary part of it that's making it slow. It's the point deforms inside the muscle flex that's making it slow. Whereas if you muscle merge first, like I have here, and then do your muscle flex, you see that you get much higher frames per second, so it's much faster. So while it's not wrong to do it this way, although you must use the muscle merge, not the regular merge, it's not wrong to do it this way, but it is going to be a lot slower. So I would um, recommend merging everything before going into a muscle flex. But you can merge together as many muscle tension line nodes as you want. Um, and that's just with the regular merge. So those are just things to bear in mind in terms of where you can use your muscle merge, when you can use a regular merge. And another thing that is hopefully obvious is don't go and merge. If 
you have a fiber groom on the one side and no fiber groom on the other stream, don't try and merge that because now you, you'll get this little warning saying that there's a mismatch of attributes. You don't want to have attributes from that exist in one stream and not in the other because that's just going to cause weird attributes to be initialized. So as long as you've done the same things in all your streams, that should be safe to merge. Now, I just want to talk a little bit more about what's happening with these candidate, these um, attachment candidate dictionaries, because there's a little subtlety that one should be aware of. So remember that I said in the main video series, I mentioned that the constraints you see in the muscle constraint properties vellum node are not the final constraints. They're just a preview. So that means that this isn't creating these constraints and merging them later, it's just showing you how they're going to be created given the current situation. But what happens once you've merged it, the settings that you had to get these constraints might change. So now if I go to my muscle solver, you might see constraints between muscles from different groups, right? So now I've got my muscle to muscle constraints on in the solver, and now you see there are these constraints between these different muscles that are from different groups. And that's because there's nothing telling it not to attach to that, right? It's just looking within the radius. If you want to avoid that, the best thing would be to probably in your general settings tab. So if you're working in a split way like this, you would do this. If you're not working in a split way, you wouldn't do this. But for this, if you have these split streams in your general settings, your first tab in your muscle to muscle sub tab, I would turn on attachment candidates and just select all the muscles that you have in that split area, right? And this is saying these muscles can only attach to themselves so that it's not going to be allowed to attach to any other muscles once more muscles are merged in. If you then have specific cases like say this muscle, you only wanted to attach to that, you can specify that in um, a later tab and that will override the settings for that specific muscle, but it will just ensure that you're not going to have any muscles that don't have any attachment candidates specified and which could lead to it being allowed to attach to any muscle, right? So now I could, if I wanted to select this, press A and add a new attachment candidate and say, oh, I only want this to attach to that muscle. And now that should override it. Let's have a look in the geometry spreadsheet. I'm going to inspect this. And this is the vastus lateralis. And here you see it's only got that one muscle specified instead of all of them. So if I turn this off and refresh, you'll see it gets all of them again. So if I turn this off in the, in the sim, give it a second to cook you'll see that you can have these attachments between muscles in different groups. Whereas if I now tell it, okay, only attach to the muscles in that stream. Let me not wait for it to cook on each frame, on each um, update. So I'll do it the same for all of these. And you don't need to do this for muscle to bone because ideally you'll have all the bones um, for each stream. If you split the bones too, then you'd have to do something similar with the bones, but I don't think you really gain much by doing that. So it's probably easiest to only do it for that. If you are using any glue candidates, you will have to do the same for glue candidates, but you shouldn't have to do it by default if you're not planning on doing the glue candidates by default. Uh, so I've turned that on for all of those. So now when I go to the muscle solver, you see those attachments between the muscles in the different groups are gone. And I'll also show now in the geometry spreadsheet, if we look at the muscle to muscle dictionary, we see that all of the muscles are defined here, right? And let's just out of interest do a regular merge and see what happens instead. You see it's only those muscles from the first group that are specified and you lose all of the data from the other groups. Okay. So that's why you don't want to use a regular merge if you've got these attachment candidates. Okay. When in doubt, use a muscle merge.
So hopefully that will give you some more flexibility if this is a workflow that you prefer. One alternative, um, if you're not concerned about, if you don't have them split in separate streams like this, but you don't like having a million tabs, subtabs in here, what you can also just do if you just have your one single stream is to chain together, you know, to stack these on top of one another and just, you could say something like this one's for the legs, this one's for the arms, this one's for the abdomen. Uh, and then you don't need to do this attachment candidates thing first because all the muscles are there all the time. It's just a question of organization so that you can see, okay, here I'm only, if I'm looking for something with the legs, I'll, I'll go to this one. If I'm looking for something with the um, arms, I'll go to this one and et cetera. And you don't need the general settings on each subsequent one. If they're stacked like this, you'll only need it on the very first one. Um, so that is an alternative if the whole muscle merge and making sure the attachment candidates are correct, etc., is a bit too daunting for you, but you want to split it, I would recommend this as an alternative. And then one final note, if you find that you've got more things to merge than the six inputs that this allows, you can stack the muscle merge nodes. So you could, for instance, let's say I'll merge the first two there, and then I can merge the remainder like so. Um, this is in this case, it obviously isn't necessary because there are only four, but you can imagine this being full and then you just add another one to add more there and you can add as many of these together as you need. So don't let the number of inputs of the muscle merge limit the number of splits you have for your muscles. Although if you have too many, it is just going to be unwieldy and confusing for anyone to use.